Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna look at the difference between a limited company and a sole trader. Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Aaron Patrick, I'm a Chartered Accountant and Certified UK Trainer and also a UK reseller. In the very last video we talked about VAT and towards the end I teased the idea of the difference between a limited company and a sole trader. Now in that tease I talked about how the taxes are different and how one can be cheaper than the other. So I thought let's have a deep dive into that video and I did ask for any comments below if that would be useful and you all came out and said that it would be useful. So let's have a deep dive into that and think about exactly how it can affect you as a UK reseller when you look at being a sole trader versus limited company. Okay then, so why is this such an important thing to talk about? Well, first of all, it's all about understanding when this is applicable to you. So I have an item and I'm thinking about reselling this item. Now, if this was my own personal item anyway, and I just put it onto eBay or Facebook Marketplace, I sold the item on, then I wouldn't have any issue because all I'm doing is selling my own personal item at this point in time. If I'd have bought this item though, and my intention when buying this item was to flip it and make a profit, then at that point, I'm creating a business and at that point, I need to consider how I should be paying taxes or potentially paying taxes on that particular item. So it's all about intention. If you're intending to sell this item when you buy it, and then when you sell it, you're intending to make a profit, then you really should be thinking about how you're going to declare that in some form of way. And when it comes to declaring it, you have various options. And there's gonna be three options I'm gonna be talking about in this video. The first one, is a sole trader, nice and straightforward. Basically means that you as an individual are selling something or you're having some sort of business transaction or business profit, and you're gonna declare them on what's called a self-assessment. The other option is a partnership, and that's where multiple of you might come together, maybe you and, a, and your wife or you and your partner, and then at that point, you're gonna to come together and you're gonna sell as one entity if you like, but the, the income's gonna be distributed between the multiple partners and then you'll declare them individually on your own self-assessments. Finally, it's a limited company. It's the limited company that's the most emphasis. It's the limited company where you could find that there are some savings and that's what we're gonna to concentrate today's video on. Basically looking at each of those individual ones, seeing which one works for you, and then hopefully then you can decide on which one's gonna be right for your business. Okay, so you're started reselling on a regular basis and your intention then is to make a profit, therefore you have a business. And at this point then, we need to decide or you need to decide how you're gonna declare that and how you're gonna push that forward to HMRC. Now by far the simplest way of doing that is by a sole trader method. And really a sole trader method is basically saying that you as an individual are starting to generate business profits. You as an individual are starting to do some turnover incur some expenses and you're going to generate some profits. Now the nice thing about doing it as a sole trader is it's really straightforward. You don't have many complications really in terms of different entities and all that sort of stuff. All you've got to really concern yourself is that you yourself have become a business and you yourself are going to have to declare any income you receive, any expenses you receive and then the important bit the profit you make on there. Now the way it works as a sole trader is you declare yourself as a sole trader to HMRC. HMRC then expects you to fill in what's called a self-assessment tax return. A self-assessment tax return is only required if you hit certain thresholds and certain criteria. Having your own business, having your own self-employment is one of the criteria that makes you have to fill a self-assessment. A self-assessment tax return is basically looking in a particular tax year all of the income you've received. So if you already have a job elsewhere, so that could be you're doing a part-time role or you're doing a full-time role and you're using reselling as an extra forms of income, you'd have to declare that income also on the tax return. So an example, if you're working, say, down in a pub or wherever it's gonna be, then you would receive wages from there. And at that point, you would then, at the end of a tax year, receive what's called a P60. 
You grab that P60, you put it on your tax return. You then put on the tax return anything else you've earned in that year. So it could be dividends, it could be interest you've received, it could also be rental income or something like that. Also included would be your sole trader income relating to your reselling. So again, it's the income, expenses, and more importantly, the profit that goes on. All of that income is then added together and the taxes you are due to pay will be based on all of the income you've had from there. So if you have got another stream of income somewhere, more than likely you're gonna be using your allowances up in your employed income. Also in your employed income, you're gonna be paying taxes on that income at source. So every single time you get a pay slip, it's already going to be taken off you all the taxes and national insurance. So that means that you shouldn't be taxed again on that source because you've already been taxed on it and you've already paid that. And when you do your self-assessment, not only will you say what taxes you've got to be due because you've got to put on all the different income streams, but also what taxes you've already paid over. So for example, in the case of already having an employed income stream, you would then declare that on your tax return. Now, this is sounding really complicated, but I promise you, this is the simplest way of dealing with this. All you've got to do is think about some really simple ideas. So first of all is dates. Most important thing about dates is gonna be when is your returns going to be due? Now, this is a bit where you've gotta be really careful because if you don't get your tax return in by a particular date, if you don't pay your tax return by a particular date, there is potential and there are going to be penalties and interest and everything else that comes naturally with it. So do make sure you understand the dates and do make sure that that makes sense to you. So the dates are really straightforward. The most important date for you will be 31st of January. That's going to be a deadline each and every year relating to your self-employed income. Now that 31st of January deadline relates to the previous tax year that's just been. And a tax year goes from the 6th of April all the way to the 5th of April. Well, to make it really easy, think of it as a 31st of March. So every time the 31st of March goes past, that means we've completed another tax year. When we've completed a tax year, you then have until the 31st of January that particular year or the next year to be able to fill in a tax return and also get it paid. So when you first set out on your reselling journey, you're going to be in a particular tax year. As soon as you pass the 31st of March in that particular tax year, you then have the option to declare that as your first years of income. When you do declare that as that first year of income, and I would recommend if you, just to keep things nice and easy for you, unless you've got an accountant, always use the 31st of March as your year end. It's gonna make your life easier. Once you've reached that first year end, you then have the 31st of January, the following 31st of January, to be able to fill in your tax return and declare how much you've earned in that particular year. Remember to be able to do that, you're gonna have all your income from your self-employed, so that's your reselling business. You're gonna to need to know all the income you've maybe received elsewhere, and you're gonna to have to generate all that income and put it all into one return. So the pros, that's all about simplicity. It's all about the fact that you don't have to worry about any of the complications, you're just dealing with yourself and all the income you've generated. And once you've done that first return, you'll understand what sort of information is needed and it will make it really easy and you'll be able to get nice little systems in place for yourself to be able to get that data in there. And if you're using something like QuickBooks Self-Employed, that software, automatically gives you everything you need to be able to file it electronically as well. So it can make it really simple and really easy for you to complete your tax return. There are also cons though to self-assessment. The biggest one being the fact that it may not be the most tax efficient way and we'll explain that later. But the other one is this concept of what's called payment on account. And payment on account is something that can be really frustrating and really difficult and, and harsh for a new business to understand and understand from a cash flow perspective. So what is payment on account? Well, effectively, if your tax bill is above the 1,000 pound limit or the 1,000 pound threshold, then at that point, you then not only do you have to pay the tax over at the 31st of January, but you then need to start contributing for next year's tax return as well. And this trigger of being over 1,000 pound can be the most dangerous and most difficult part for a sole trader or a new business or a new reseller to be able to comprehend. The way the payment on accounts effectively work is if your tax bill is above that £1,000 threshold, then HMRC want you to start paying for next year tax 
at the same time you pay for that year's tax. So let's put this into a really simple example. Let's say your taxable figure due at the 31st of January was 1,500 because that amount is above the 1,000 pound threshold means you not only have to pay 1,500 pound as at the 31st of January, but you'd also have to contribute to next year as well. And the way they figure that out from HMRC's point of view is they take how much you were due to pay, divide by two, and that's the amount you'd have to pass over. So in this case, 750 pounds. That means in that first year, potentially you've got 2,250 pounds to pay over. Also, 31st of July, following from that 31st of January, you've then got to pay another 750 pounds because then at that point you've paid in advance what HMRC expect your next tax return to be. Fast forward then to the next year and you come to the next 31st of January. Well, at that point, you'll do the same process you've just done and you'll make sure that you've got your tax return on completed and you'll come to a tax figure. If that was 1,600, for example, then at that point, you've already paid 1,500 pound up front so you'd only have to pay £100 after that, but you will then be expected, just like the previous year, to pay for next year's as well. So they're going to want £600 up front in that January, then to the next July, they're going to want another £600, and that process keeps going and going and going and going. Payment account can be a really tricky thing to understand, because you're always in this whole topsy-turvy area in terms of how much tax needs to be paid. And also you're constantly trying to figure out how much tax is for the next year and how much you've paid up front. And then instead of just having to pay one tax figure, you'll then suddenly have to pay two tax figures, one in January and one in July. So that's one of the biggest cons of going sole trader. Okay, the next popular option. The next popular option is a partnership. Think of a partnership as multiple sole traders together. Now, the advantage of this means that you can split your income that you've earned as a partnership between two different people. And one of the concepts or one of the benefits of doing this is that you can use your personal allowance on multiple people. Personal allowance is basically a concept that every person in the UK have a threshold before they have to start paying tax. Now, this threshold, around about £12,000, just to keep it really straightforward, is a threshold that means that the more or the more of those thresholds you can utilise, the less tax that there would be to pay. So if you have the opportunity to split it between two different people, then in theory, overall, you're going to be paying less tax. And that's where partnerships can be really beneficial. Two of you can be working on the same business, but because it's split into two different people, two different self-assessments, everything else that goes with it, means technically you could split that tax bill and reduce the tax bill burden overall. The disadvantage of that though, is that because two of you are working in the same business, when we think about that last video that we just did about VAT, it means that there's an opportunity there that you're going to be paying more because you're gonna to have to think about VAT because there's two people working on the same business, therefore it's gonna be easier or it's gonna be more likely, should I say, of you hitting that 85,000 threshold. Because unfortunately for a partnership, you're overall income as a partnership will count towards that 85,000, not splitting it between two different people. So use that and think about that as a consequence of partnership. The final one I want to talk about is limited company. Now a limited company is completely different to the ones we're talking about. And in essence, what you're doing is you're creating a separate legal entity your limited company, which is separate to you as an individual person. This being a separate legal entity means you've got to treat it separately. It's got to have its own bank account. It's got to have own tax return being completed for it. And it's going to have other administration ta tasks involved around it as well. So the limited company route is a far more complicated way of looking at it. But as you'll see, there are some tax benefits to utilizing it. So the pros of using a limited company is it's the taxable, it's the most tax efficient way of doing things. The other pros is you get what's called limited liability state. And what that means is that you personally are not at risk if your business ever comes into financial difficulty. Now, from a reselling point of view, that shouldn't be an issue and we shouldn't have these sort of things, but it is nice to know that basically if your business goes 
kaput or there's something wrong with it or there's some issues with it you personally as in you yourself aren't liable for things like mortgages being taken over and things like that so limited liability can be a really good thing to consider when it comes to your business because it's less risky in terms of you personally and your personal asset a limited company is also gives the opportunity for you to maybe buy and sell that business itself you might be able to sell it on and at a later date or you might be able to bring people on board who are going to help you grow that business and be part of that business as well so you get more flexibility if you like and you get more growth ability with a limited company the disadvantages though is it's really complicated in terms of what needs to be done for it the fact that it needs its own personal tax return and you will also have to do a tax return means you've just doubled the amount of tax returns you need to do as a sole trader and partnership to a point you can get away with kind of simplistic accounts and accounts that you could generate yourself when you're looking at limited companies really i would advise having an accountant on board because you have to make accounts that are what's called statutory so you have to make these statutory accounts that have got all the rules and regulations in place and that's going to be something that from someone who's never done a set of accounts for very difficult for getting your head around and getting it all set up so do think about a, a, an accountant or something like that if you're going to go down the limited company route the biggest advantage though is you do get away most of all from that payment on account scenario and that can be a real benefit to your cash flow that can mean quite a significant chunk of tax that you're not having to pay over in that first year as opposed to when you may have to pay it over so do think of it from that point of view as well Okay, so that's looking at the practical aspects of it. And there are more things to consider as well, but when it comes down to your choice of which one to go for, sometimes the most important thing to talk about is gonna be that tax element of it. So let's have a deep dive into the taxes available in each one. Okay, so as you can see on this screen, I'm trying to use the same methodology we use for the VAT element, just so people can understand where I'm getting the figures from. Now again, don't worry too much about how these figures have arrived. What you care about is this profit figure. So in this particular example, we're saying they've made £20,000. Now £20,000 is quite a nice little figure to start off with. And we're going to see how that impacts and how that will be treated differently in different scenarios. Okay then, so let's consider what would happen from a point of view of a sole trader now first of all you will get a profit figure that you will need to put on your self-assessment and this figure i'm showing here is your best case scenario because there could be a point where you've got other salary elsewhere and if you have other salary elsewhere these figures are quite significantly so when it comes to it you've got 19,780 in this first scenario that's all that you've got. One thing to take into account is this motion of wages. And as a sole trader, you don't need to think about wages at all. Wages isn't something that affects a sole trader. You would not be taking a wage from a sole trader business. Basically, your income is whatever that company's generated. When that business generates profits, that's what you're gonna be taxed on. So that's what you've taken out of the business. And when you do take money out of the business, it's classed as drawing. So. I've made £20,000, let's just round that up. How is that gonna be affected? Well, here would be a taxable figure on it, and here would be my national insurance. So it'd be £2,811. The most difficult bit to understand about this is this whole notion of payment on account. So if you had payment on account, in this scenario, what I would be looking at doing here is putting half of that again in place so it jumps up from not only having to pay 2,800 in that first year but having to pay 4,200. Now the payment account scenario only hits you this hard in the first year. In the second year you would have already have paid 2,800 pound up front so if you had a similar tax bill you would only be looking in that first year to pay 1,400 but it's still a significant amount of change to be paying over and in that first year you really want to be concentrating in keeping as much cash back so that you can reinvest it in the business and a lot of people and a lot of the traders and a lot of the resellers I have they don't take any money out in that first year they reinvest it all into there. So this chunk of change here is really something they would prefer to be utilizing in buying more stock 
to grow their business. Okay, in this next scenario, we're gonna still stick with Soul Trader, but we're gonna see the impact as if you had a part-time job somewhere. So in this scenario, we have a part-time Soul Trader with employment. That means we're still getting the same profit. So imagine you're still getting that 20,000 pound, but you had other income of say 16,000 pound. Now this figure could be more, it could be less, but either way, you've got other income coming in. Now the problem with the other income is you've already paid taxes on it. So that's a good thing. So you don't have to effectively pay taxes on it again as such, but your personal allowance is being utilized. Now I keep mentioning personal allowance and it's probably something that's worthwhile understanding the exact benefits of it. Basically in the first sole trader one, because we've got no other income, the first 12,500 of this would have been tax free in terms of personal tax. Now, you'd still have to pay national insurance, but basically, if you went and got 20% of that profit, you'll notice that 20% doesn't come back to that tax figure of 1,756. The reason for that is the first 12,000 odd pound of it is completely tax free, and then the rest of it will have 20% on there, just to keep it nice and simple. When we look at the part-time sole trader with employment, you're in a really difficult position here, because your personal allowance has already been utilized in your income, in your employment income. Therefore, every penny you earn in your sole trader on your reselling business is going to incur taxes. So you'll see here that because that taxable profit has been increased, then you're going to incur more taxes. The national insurance is gonna be the same because it's not, doesn't, doesn't, it's not being utilized the allowance anywhere else, but that means your total taxes is gonna be 4,100, meaning your payment and account in effect is going up even more. So if you're part-time and sticking it in from an employment point of view, see how dangerous and how much more tax you'd have to pay potentially in that first year. The final one is looking at a limited company and how the taxes work. Well, the first thing to look at is that profit would come in there, but the difference with this is you will be able to take a wage or we would recommend you take a wage out of a limited company. Now we would only recommend taking about 8,500 odd. When you take 8,500, that becomes a taxable expense against your business, reducing the amount of taxes you need to pay. Now, there's a reason we do 8,500. I won't go into the bore, bore you with that now, but I would highly recommend that's the figure that you take. Meaning your corporation tax bill is 19% of the taxable profits. That's less than the 20% for a sole trader plus the national insurance on top. You would have this extra complication with a limited company though, where if you're only taking an 8,500 pound wage, you may need more to survive and pay your mortgage and pay your rent or whatever it's gonna be. Therefore, you would want to take out what's called dividends to top it up. Now, the nice thing about a limited company is, it's up to you how much money you take out of that business and how much additional tax you're gonna be charged. So if you are one of those people who are looking to reinvest the money all the time, then you won't incur this extra tax dividends, all you'll incur is that corporation tax. But if I was to take the money out, 19,780, then you will notice that from a dividends point of view, it's 1,113 uh, pound, which is far less than the national insurance here. Therefore, overall, your tax bill would be there. Now, technically here, it's telling you there's a payment account, but actually, because it's under the thousand pound, that payment account wouldn't be accounted for and you'd only have to pay it there. Now, the only disadvantage about the limited company or the other disadvantage about a limited company is from a payment point of view, you don't just have to rely on that 31st of January. There's also gonna be other aspects to it as well. So you would actually pay these tax bills at two different times. So the 2,143 here will be paid nine months and a day after whatever your year end is for your limited company and this 113 will be paid at the 31st of January in this case. So you do have two different taxable elements, but overall, it'll be a less amount of tax to pay. You just got from an admin point of view, pay it twice. Now this figures here, you'll notice that basically if you're part-time self uh, sole trader with employment, you get absolutely hammered from a tax point of view because your personal allowance is being utilized. If you're part-time of a limited company though, still going to be a little bit more tricky for you. 
So let me just show you how that would look like. So if you're doing a part-time limited company and you've got employment elsewhere, then the problem you will have, the other thing to consider is if you're a part-time reseller and you also have other income elsewhere, what will that affect on your limited company? Well, as you can see, you'll still make that same profit in your limited company. Your other income will be 16,000 as we did with that part-time self-employed income. The only thing that I would say here though is we wouldn't recommend taking the wages out because you'd have to incur taxes on it anyway. Therefore, your corporation tax will increase accordingly. And if then you were looking to take the income out, that would leave you with corporation tax of, of this figure, 3,758, which is more than the other one because of the wages not being there. Now, effectively, that leaves you with around about 16,000 pound left in the business. You want to take that 16,000 pound out you will incur a tax. But if you don't take that 16,000 pound out and you left it in the business, you don't incur the next tax. The next tax, 825 pound, that's based on you having dividends taken out of 16,000. So again, you're in control how much you take. Maybe you only wanna take 5,000, which means it's gonna reduce the dividend further even low, lower. But if you took every penny out and you wanted and you needed to for your own benefit, whatever it's going to be, if you took all of that 16,000 pound out, you will incur a tax bill of 825 pound, which will need to be paid on your next self-assessment and paid from there. Now with a limited company, you do have multiple taxes you need to pay. There are multiple tax returns you're gonna to need to, to do. You're gonna to need to do your own plus the limited company as well. So again, a cat accountant might be easier for you. The one thing that can really make this look even more scary is what if we started to increase our turnover? So imagine in this case that our profitability was even better and we were only, so we were selling things on at 33%. So we were buying something in and we were getting triple the money back. Now, if that's the case, and imagine we had no rent either and we were able to not incur that rent expense, suddenly our profit's jumping up to around about the £40,000 mark. If we were able to get £40,000 worth of income in, then this changes even more significantly at this point. Because basically, your profit from a sole trader gives you a final figure of 12,500. Your profits, because of that payment on account, your profits as a part-time self-employed income will give you another 18,000 pound of taxes to pay on that first year. The limited company though, if you didn't have part-time employment, you're gonna be looking at almost half of what the tax bill was originally. And then if you still had employment, there's still gonna be quite a chunk of tax to pay on that. But again, it's going to be less than being a sole trader as it is. One thing to note though, when you start getting higher and higher, because you're taking more dividends out and you could incur taxes on dividends, then there may be an, op or may be an issue there for you in terms of the fact that you may have a payment account to consider as well. But it's still gonna be far less payment account than if you were a sole trader. And then you have it, it's a complicated issue, something that is actually quite difficult and something I, again, I would highly recommend talking to an accountant about. I'm an accountant, so if you do want to shout out at me, then please, please, please do put comments in below if you want me to have a look at anything. And do remember, these are all really basic figures and basically I'm just throwing these together just to give you an element of what to expect. But hopefully you can see that a limited company versus sole trader, there's lots of considerations to be made, especially when you start thinking about administration and how simple they are going to be. The sole trader is definitely a more simplistic way of being able to deal with things. And if you're just cutting your teeth and just understanding how reselling works, probably the right thing to do. But at some point you may, if it starts getting serious, you may want to consider that limited company process. And the thing is with these savings and everything, the sooner you do them, the more savings that you get. So it is about making sure you get the right time and move over from one to another. Don't be afraid to move mid-year. If you get a good accountant, they'll be able to deal with all that for you. If you are doing it yourself though, just be careful about the fact that if you move mid-year, you're gonna to have to put half of one of the elements in and half of the other in as well. Overall, it's a really complicated one. But if your intention is to buy and sell to make a profit, you need, you must, must, must be declaring that. And then your choice is how you declare it. Do you have it as a limited company? Do you have it as a sole trader? Your choice is going forward. And I think you should do it yourself justice by at least considering 
a limited company status over a sole trader status. That way, if you do consider it, you do see the tax benefits, you're going to be better off overall. And if you've got part-time income, do, do, do really consider how you're building your and putting your... If you don't get this right, you do find a way in which you're going to be paying a considerable amount of taxes, which could be unnecessary for your business type. Hopefully that was interesting to you. Hopefully you understood that. This could be a lot of questions to come in this one. One thing I am going to do in the next video is I'm going to take your questions you had about the VAT. I'm going to try and explain them as best I possibly can. And also for this one as well, this is going to definitely have questions coming back for it. I've not really been able to give it the justification it needs. There's a lot more to it than what I've gone through and each person is gonna be individual as well. But if we take it down to just the simplistic ways as we possibly can, hopefully at least you can understand where this is going and hopefully you can understand that this complication is worthwhile at least talking to a, a professional about it at the very least. Don't forget QuickBooks is a perfect way of being able to keep up and tab of all this art. Then you can start trying to look at yourself about how much taxes and stuff that might be appropriate. But do, do, do talk to me or talk to someone else and see if we can help and understand about exactly for your business how it's going to go forward. Remember, my guys at Boffix, they're there for your help as well. So if you are looking to get yourself a QuickBooks license, do get in touch with them. Or if you want bookkeeping or accounts or payroll, whatever it is they want to do or you want to pass over, they also do special rates for resellers themselves based purely on how much items you sell on a month by month basis. So they're gonna make it really competitively priced and make it really easy for you to understand how much you're gonna get charged. Well, my name's been Aaron. Thank you very much for taking time to look at this video. Do make sure you do the subscribe and like buttons. It's gonna help make this video go where it needs to go and get as much information out there as we possibly can. That's what this is all about. I want to make sure as many people listen to this, as many people understand this, and we can understand it going forward. Well, my name's been Aaron. Thank you for listening, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Even if we're seeing bad, I'm hard to see, yeah, yeah.